All right, hi, this is Steve Moore with Garrett Metal Detectors, and we are here today with one of our distributors, American Detector Distributors in the Texas area, and we are delivering our first couple of demo units for their showroom floor. I know they're excited to talk to their retailers and out to their customers about the AT Max. So we've got a first couple off the line. We thought we'd run over here since they're practically in our backyard and deliver and put a couple together, let you guys try them out. All right, so let's open it up. When the customers get the kit, they're gonna have an official owner's manual. This one, we just ran off real quick because I'm still getting the final ones printed, but you'll have that here shortly. And you'll have a AT Max cap in there and a coil cover. And you'll notice some pretty nice uh, MS3 packaging here. Nice attractive look for the wireless headphones. Make you feel like you've got a nice quality purchase when you open this thing up. So let's just take it out. Bill, I'll hand you the headphones. We're gonna check those out. Absolutely. We will start putting this guy together. So we've got the, the main unit there, and of course you got nice new grip design, waterproof grip. Tried this out quite a bit, and it's great. Mm -hmm. We did some uh, shallow scuba diving a couple weeks ago with it, and it cleaned up, sprayed it off. Beautiful. Had it clean in no time. So it comes complete with a coil cover to keep everybody from getting the bottom of their coil scuffed up on the gravel and the rocks. Especially the guys doing the river hunting on those, those little jagged rocks. It really saves, you know, puts some life on your coil. Yes. Do that and you just kind of give it a little press down. It should snap right yeah, into place. it's already in there. It's ready to go. Good to go. All right. All right, so now we're going to put this together here. I always pop this on above. Just kind of loosen that to get it on easier. A little bit easier to pop these guys in and I give it like a half twist to go in and you want to make sure you get it into the first opening there so you got the pens come right through and you can drop that camera lock back down tighten it up hand tight you don't want to crank it super tight it'll get stuck on there so just kind of give it a hand tight and then with the coil kind of wrap the cord over the top on the first wrap that kind of keeps brush and other obstructions from getting up underneath there that's just the way we recommend it. And then, of course, we put our coil in there, get it connected. I need my glasses to line this thing up. Mm. Get it going there. We got it. The older you get, you got to rely on the glasses <laughs> a little bit more every year. Yeah. No, I keep them on hand. <laughs> Let you go around the neck. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Tighten it up. And then what I do is get it to where it's a comfortable length for me. So I'll kind of put a foot on it and pinch these in and wrap that around snugly. Get it to where I'm happy with it. Might even wrap it one more time, but you don't want a lot of play in the in the coil there. You want to keep the, the cord you know pretty tight. Okay, so again we've got the MS3 headphones, the wireless headphones that come standard with the AT Max. The good thing is it's a very compact unit. You can collapse them up just like that for stowage or for travel, put it in your backpack, get out to the field, just fold out just like that. And of course they come with a charging cable. So on the one end, you get this little micro USB connector, which will plug into that port right there. And on the other end, you've got your standard USB connection. So you can charge this on your home computer, on an adapter or on your lighter, a laptop, anywhere you've got a USB port. If your headset's fully dead, it should get uh, charged in five hours or less, and you should get at least a couple of full days of hunting out of that. So we'll set these aside for the moment. And let's go ahead and power up our AT Max. So if you're familiar with the Pro or the Gold, you've got a simple one press to get it turned on. It comes on in the coins mode. And you'll see the Z-Link icon is blinking right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and power up my headphones within two feet of the unit. Press until I see the red light come on. That solid light means that it's paired and you also see a solid icon on the screen indicating this unit is paired. If for some reason they have become unpaired or if you're hooking up a new device for the first time, you can power on the headphones and simply to press those two buttons at the same time, right where it says Z-Link, press those, hold them in, 
for about a second, you'll see that icon go steady. You'll see the light go solid red on the LED and you're paired. So you've got audio. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the headphones off here. And uh, Bill, if you wanna go through and test some of your targets again, now we can hear the audio. We're going to try the different pitches as the AT Max well discerns the differences between the types of coins that your uh, detector might be picking up. First of all, we'll try the full copper penny. As you can hear there, I'm well over half a foot away and even more, almost a foot away. And the machine, the AT Max here is not set at full sensitivity at this point. Again, the full copper penny and now the zinc clad penny. Definitely a pitch change to indicate the differences between the compositions of those two pennies. The half dollar, it's a clad half. And I'm, again, I'm over a foot away and machine is easily picking up on it. And the quarter, both of those are high pitch. They're copper clad coins. They represent higher conductivity uh, coins that are easily picked up by the detector and defined for you as a higher pitch return signal. Let's try the nickel. The nickel, as you know, is a lower conductivity than most of your coins, uh, including the full copper penny, as well as your quarter and your half dollar. And there's a difference in the pitch for the nickel, although I'm picking up the nickel easily at just nearly a foot away. And I'm gonna go back to the full copper penny and a nickel. We're going to compare the AT Max here. We've just gone through the AT Max when it was having a, a, an amount of discrimination. But what we're going to do is we're going to set it at zero and we're going to discern the targets basically on the pitch of the return signal sound. So here we'll start first of all with the full copper penny. The nickel, a lower pitch signal since the nickel is lower conductivity than the penny. And now what we pick up so many times is the iron rusty bottle caps. It's an, almost a growly sound, easily discernible as a target that you don't want to bother to dig. Back to the penny and the nickel. Let's try a, a nail. Even a lower pitch sound for truly an iron type nail. The bottle cap, the penny, and the nickel. And so I guess the one thing you notice there, Bill, is it's a very distinctive iron sound on the AT Max almost like you've got discrim or iron audio or something going. Yes. And yet there's no discrim set on that machine. So the users of the Pro and the Gold may hear a little variance here, but yes. it's really gonna tell you a little bit more about what that signal is that you're hearing. It's a delightful return and a response by the AT Max to these targets. And it's very distinctive. It's easy to tell them apart. All right, so it's the 1st of August, and again, we're at one of our local Texas distributors uh, bringing the first couple of demo units of the AT Max to them. Garrett uh, plans to be shipping orders here pretty quick later in August, so stay tuned. We'll get an announcement out. I know you're excited about the AT Max. Be with you shortly.